Good afternoon, pet parents of Regina, or wherever you might find yourself on this furry Friday afternoon. How are you all? Oh, the weeks are going quicker and quicker, and the weather probably has something to do with that, right? Because we're still kind of indoors. Um, except for when it's really nice and then we're out walking the floofs and hanging out in parks or our backyards and the time is coming. Even though I looked in the forecast and in Regina, we are showing a chance of snow in a couple days, four or five days, um, which is great. Great. We thought we were rid of the snow. But it is getting nice out. And um, that's why I wanted to talk about... I'm going to flip you guys around again. I wanted to talk about ticks. Because tick and flea season is coming. And so you're going to start seeing the commercials on the TV. And likely uh, your vet is going to be talking to you or sending you information um, regarding preventative measures that you can take for fleas and ticks. But the reason that I wanted to talk about this today on Furry Friday, because of course, we don't want ticks. We do not want ticks, right? We don't want ticks. We don't want fleas. Oftentimes, um, the preventative measures for fleas is simply good nutrition. It's very rare that a healthy dog, uh, a healthy dog or cat with um, a, a, an optimized immune system would get fleas. That's usually not the case because fleas typically go after animals that don't have a good immune system that are, you know, kind of withering down or sickly. Um, so if we're feeding a really healthy diet, that's step number one to preventing fleas. Ticks those ugly little things, um, they're a little bit different, right? We can get ticks, regardless of how healthy we are, we can get ticks, so can the furry guys. And so we do want to prevent them. But the reason that I wanted to talk about this today is because there are many different products out there. I've got kind of like the four most common ones, NexGuard, Simperica, Frontline Plus, and Bravacto. Uh, in fact, Zayner has had Bravacto in the past. But I wanted to tell you guys why I no longer give Zayner a tick pill or get any type of topical treatment or collar or powder. All of the different methods that these manufacturers have come up with to get this medicine into our animals or on our animals. This is why oral and topical tick and flea medications have the potential for causing neurological adverse events in dogs and cats, including muscle tremors, ataxia, and seizures. Ataxia is essentially um, when the medicine attacks the, the Cebra, oh my God, I can't even say it, you guys, sorry. It's a part of the brain, the cebralum, cebras, mm -hmm -hmm. I'm not a doctor. Um, anyways, it gives the illusion that the person is, or animal is acting like drunk. They have no coordination. Cebra, oh, I, I, can't say, I can't say the word, you guys, ignore me. Anyways, this is how these medicines work. Flea and tick chemicals work by attacking the nervous system of the parasite to paralyze fleas and ticks to ultimately kill them. I want you to pay attention to this part, attacking the nervous system. This is how these, I don't even want to call them medicines. This is how these products or chemicals work to try to keep our dogs and cats safe from ticks is the chemicals that are in all of these different tick pills, the Sempericas, the Bravactos, the Frontline Plus. I don't care what the name is. If we're getting some sort of a tick pill or 
topical where we're putting it on the animal like this, okay, it is not the best option. And the poor little hound knows that because of how they work, because they work to attack the nervous system. That is their sole purpose to attack the nervous system of the parasites that we are trying to address. Okay, so once that medicine is in our dogs or cats, if they have that adverse reaction that could be a, a seizure or a tremor or anything that is neurologically affecting them or impacting them, that drug is already in their system or on their skin and seeping into their system. This is why I no longer... Hi there. Hi. This is why I no longer give Zaner any type of tick medicine, whether he ingests it by eating some sort of a tablet or whether it's uh, some sort of a, a liquid or something that we're applying to the skin, um, collars, powders, it doesn't matter. The whole purpose for why we're putting that on there is so that if they were to get a tick, the chemicals in there will attack the nervous system of the tick, which also means it can, it can impact the nervous system of our animals. This is why this happens, because the nervous system is being attacked or impacted, okay? So I'm going to show you guys what I do for Zaner. Flip you back around. We have, and I'm going to stand away from the sun, sorry. We have a local vendor, and I should I should back up. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, Lee. Hello, May. Marilyn, Gail, Delane, Jana, Alana, Jennifer, Gail. Again, sorry, Julia. Hello, everybody. I apologize. I was uh, I was in the zone, and I'm a little bit passionate about this. Um, hello, Michelle simply because I'm trying to do as much as possible to provide Zaner. Hello, Dan. I'm trying to provide Zaner with the most natural approach to his health and well-being as possible. So this is why I talk about a bunch of different things that um, when we go, and, and, and I'm not slamming the vets, you guys. The vets, uh, I mean, they they are going highly... They are going, uh, they are providing you with the best information that they have and everything that they've learned. Um, I'm looking for more natural, holistic options to keep Zaner as healthy as possible, okay? So actually, the first thing I want to show you, I talked about when we started this. Gloria, I have used doTERRA lavender and water spray. Awesome. It's natural, right? Um the first thing that I talked about when we started this is one. Oh, look at there's the monkey right there. Uh, he is resting this week after his dentistry. Um, uh, so the little boy is totally back to himself. But mama says he has to rest at home, which he's not enjoying. He's still going for his walks, but he's not going to work. But the first thing that I talked about is one of the ways that we can keep our animals parasite free and as healthy as possible starts with nutrition and then we can also provide supplements or natural products to boost their immunity so one of the things that I do with Zaner it's backwards I know you guys I apologize turkey tail okay this is our new supplements that we have in super snouts they've got some amazing products and one of them is turkey tail so Turkey tail mushrooms actually have medicinal properties um, that can combat cancer. And what a turkey tail mushroom does, hello, Ms. Kerr, what, what turkey tail mushrooms do is they actually increase the production of white blood cells when we ingest the turkey tails, the turkey tail mushrooms. They increase the, the production of white blood cells by de and then decreasing the cancer cell death. So if an animal or a person had the C word that I just said that I hate, um, 
including turkey tail into the diet is very beneficial to help fight that. And actually the owners of Super Snouts, the reason that they, this is, if you ask them what is the best product that they sell, they're going to tell you this because their furry guy did get the C word. Um, and six months into having it, he has now been cancer free for the past 18 months and he gets turkey tail every day. Turkey tail is also a fantastic way that we can boost the immunity of our animals. And so there's a couple of reasons that I include turkey tail into Zaner's daily food. One, I want to boost his immunity. He is not fighting or battling the C word and hopefully never does. Um, but I still want to keep his immunity as sharp and on point as I possibly can. So I include turkey tail. Um, the other thing, of course, is he is getting a uh, nourishing diet that is good for him, keeping him healthy and strong. Um, and the other thing that I do with regard, well, the other reason that I want to really boost his immunity, and again, this is how I'm doing it with our Super Snouts turkey tail. The other reason I want to really boost his uh, immunity, hello, Mike, is that I don't want to give him a heartworm pill either. And the reason that I don't is because again, it's just, it's chemicals that I'm putting into his body, which I'm trying to avoid. Jen says, can I combine kefir and turkey tail? Absolutely. Yep, you can. And you can, in fact, you guys, as soon as we're done this, I'm going to pop over. I'm going to show you all the rest of these supplements. They're amazing. I also include another one into Zaner's diet. So I'm going to show you that one too. Um, but yes, because these supplements are in a powder form, so it's a good question, Jen, we always want to include some sort of a liquid, especially if we're feeding a dry diet, because we don't want them snorting up the powder. They're not going to be happy with that, and we're not getting it in them. So any type of liquid, whether we're adding kefir to the bowl or bone broth to the bowl or some sort of a wet diet, like a, a wet stew um, then we can put that powder in there. Or if we're already doing raw, we have the ability, there's already moisture in the food. So then we can include our powdered supplements and just kind of mix it into the raw food. Zayner gets raw, um, as well as his bone broth. And of course his goat's milk in the morning. You guys have heard me talk about that because he gets me out of bed for it. Um, but the other reason, okay, so the other reason that I'm wanting to improve or increase or boost his immunity as much as possible is because I'm not giving him that heartworm pill, which is additional chemicals. Oftentimes, heartworm pills are recommended monthly. And so what heartworm is, for those who may not know, heartworms are for, for our pets are spread by mosquitoes. And... <laughs> It's, it's actually quite funny because we live in Saskatchewan where the mosquito is like our national bird or our provincial bird. And my vet never, ever, ever talked to me about heartworm. Uh, my old vet never talked to me about heartworm until I was going down to Arizona. And then they talked to me about, and I was going down in winter and I was going down for two weeks and they told me they recommended that I absolutely get a heartworm pill because I was going to Arizona well, if you've ever been to Arizona, there's definitely more mosquitoes here than there ever is in Arizona. I don't think I've ever got a bite in Arizona. But anyways, um, so heartworm, the, the heartworm pills that you get doesn't actually prevent heartworm. If your dog has the larvae from the mosquitoes in his bloodstream, the pill will get the larvae out of the bloodstream to prevent the possibility that heartworm could occur. With a very strong immune system, your dog's body will recognize the larvae as a foreign substance in the body and the immune system will take over to remove it from the body. So that's another reason why I really want to boost Zaner's immunity because I'm not giving a heartworm pill. I'm not doing the flea and tick pills. What I do for flea and tick, I'm going to show you guys this. This is one of our, it is called F-off bugs. Oh, there we go. Sorry. F-off bugs. It is one of our local 
vendors that we sell for in store, Bears Paws. And Sarah is certified in the holistic approach to using um, essential oils and salves and herbs for our animals. So that's kind of like a bug spray for dogs, but I use it too. I use it with me and I use it with Zayner. And of course, last year with our, uh, when tick season came to be every, okay, um, every day for me, but maybe every second day for Zayner, I put the F off bugs on it. It's got a beautiful smell, beautiful smell, you guys. And so when I could still smell it on him, then I wasn't reapplying, right? And he doesn't bathe every day. We bathe every day. Zayner doesn't take a bath every day. So I would put, and I literally, it's an essential oil blend. And I just put like, you know, one to three drops on my hands and I rub my hands together and then I rub it on Zayner's little undercarriage and on all four legs and a little bit on his bum. He's not running through fields. He's not running through like big grassy open areas. Uh, my backyard is is not grassed. It's deck and rock. Um, so and, and I'm not letting him go into big, tall, grassy areas. So in that respect, I'm trying to limit his exposure to the potential for ticks. But then I also use the bear's paws F off bugs and it, it lasts. So it doesn't look that big, you guys, but it lasts because you use so little. It's got a little eyedropper in there. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a little tiny eyedropper in there. So literally one to three drops and I rub my hands together and then I rub it all over Zaner's undercarriage and I rub the rest on my skin that mosquitoes could bite or, or whatever. Um, and again, the reason that I'm doing this is because with these, I don't care what kind they are, and I, and I certainly haven't listed all of them, but with all of the different flea and tick pills that you're going to see all these commercials, th this, sorry, I should mention this. Oral and topical tick and flea medications have the potential for causing neurological adverse events in dogs and cats, including muscle tremors, ataxia, and seizures. That is actually the warning that the FDA has put out. And if you listen to the commercials, when you see the commercials for any of these products, they sound like those commercials uh, for, you know, these um, new and exploratory drugs that they have for us, where whatever symptoms you're actually trying to address, there is a list of potential side effects that are 10 times worse, 100 times worse than whatever ailment it is you're trying to fix with these new drugs that they keep coming out with. They have the same warning on the commercials that you will hear for any of these flea and tick medicines or chemicals. I, I keep saying medicines, but I and I hate this. Look at this, you guys. Flea and tick protection never tasted so good. <clears throat> Who cares? Tastes good. It also has the potential to cause neurological side effects in our animals because the chemicals are attacking the nervous system of the parasites they're trying to kill. And we don't want that in them. I don't care if it's a chewable tablet. I don't care if it's a put it on the skin or a powder or a collar I'm not putting any of that on Zayner because when I do, it's in him, it's on him, it's leaching into his skin or he's digested it. And if there is any type of an issue, if he has a seizure or if he has some neurological issue that occurs from having this flea and tick pill, it's too late. It's in him. So um, I don't do it for him. Like I said, the way that I do it, Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Shannon. The way that I do it is I boost his immunity system with the turkey tail and I use a natural essential oil blend from Bear's Paws to ward off as his bug spray, kind of, right? But it's kind of cologne because it smells so good. I was going to, so I, I told you guys, I'm going to flip you over here and I'm going to show you our new super snouts. So joint power. This is the other supplement that I include into little Mr. Zayner's diet. And by the way, hi, Kara, all of the Super Snout supplements are good for cats and dogs. Okay, so it doesn't matter who your furry guy is. 
you can use the Super Snout supplements. Joint power is literally just green lipid muscles. And it supports joints, ligaments, tendons, muscles. It supports the body, really. It supports the body. It's also, fancy enough, it is also an appetite or palate in enhancer. So if we've got a picky floof out there, um, we can add joint power just to entice them to eat their food because they quite like the taste of joint power. If we want to try to prevent uh, UTIs or bladder infections or even um, crystals for our kitties, the, the struvite crystals that can sometimes occur more common in male cats than female, but they can still be there. Urinary berry is the supplement that we want to put into their diets. It is very berry tasting. Um, so sometimes they love it and sometimes they're like, mm, <laughs> hide this flavor, mama. But the reason that this works for the UTIs or the bladder is because it essentially helps to create a mucal lining on the organs, uh, the um, bladder and, and the urinary tract to prevent anything from sticking that might cause crystals. Turkey tail, as you can see it hiding back there, we just talked about that. We're also waiting for super shrooms, um, which I'll chat about when it comes in. Pumpkin latte, and it smells literally just like a pumpkin latte. latte. This will help us support the GI health, the gastrointestinal health, as well as boosting immune. And it's kind of like for those little furry guys who possibly have GERD, or they have um, acid reflux when, you know, and we've had a couple pet parents telling us like, oh my goodness, I can hear his tummy rumbling from across the room. A little bit of pumpkin latte uh, made up as a drink, right? So you can do it. It, it. it does have goat's milk in it, but you can definitely make it with goat's milk or a warm water. Um, and we give that to pupper, you know, or kitty right before they go to bed that's going to kind of fill their tummy and relax their little bellies. And then lastly, but certainly not leastly, GI balance, which again is supporting the gastrointestinal health. Um, and GI balance is kind of, it's that pumpkin probiotic. So if we're looking for ways to increase the number of probiotics in our little furry guy's diet, GI balance is a, is a, is a great way to do that. Here we go. This is our F off bugs. Here's where you will find it. Okay. And so it just does come in the little eyedropper bottles. It lasts forever. I'm telling you, like, um, you should see my bottle from last year. And we used it throughout the entire tick season. And you wouldn't even think that I used it. That's how little you use and how long it lasts. There you go, you guys my lovely hair for you. Anyways, this is what we are talking about today, you guys. We are talking about natural, more holistic ways, less chemical in our furry guys for preventing ticks and fleas. It starts with a healthy, healthy little gut on a healthy furry little body. And then we can find different ways to avoid the parasites out there. So I thank you guys as always for spending some of your Friday afternoon with us. I look forward to seeing you in store either today or over the weekend. I hope you enjoy your weekend. If we do get snow, hopefully it doesn't last that long. But if you're looking for natural or more holistic ways um, for flea and tick prevention, then we've got options for you. Okay, you guys, have a fantastic Friday, and we'll chat again soon. Bye-bye.